The word autophagy comes from a Greek word meaning self-eating. Auto means self and phagi means to consume. In modern medicine, it is the name for a process in which our body cleans out damaged cells, recycles proteins and other cellular components in order to regenerate newer, healthier cells. In 2016, biologist Yoshinori Osumi was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discoveries of mechanisms for autophagy, a study into how cells detoxify and repair themselves, and his work has reignited an interest in fasting, a practice that stretches back into antiquity. When a person starts to fast, the body starts utilizing fat for energy. Since it has already depleted the glucose or sugar in the blood from a normal diet. When the fast continues for a prolonged period, the body requires protein. And while it can get some by breaking down muscle tissue, which is very valuable, it also upgrades its ability to recycle old damaged cells, as well as viruses and bacteria and other debris to convert it into new protein, stem cells, white blood cells, and makes the body more efficient by removing dead cells. This state of detoxification and self-healing is autophagy and starts to happen after one begins to fast. As a result, a person experiences a renewed immune system, improved arthritis, reversal of diabetes, lower blood pressure, improved skin, a lessening of degenerative diseases in the brain, and even a reduction or potential reversal in early stages of cancer. That said, the most cited benefit of autophagy seems to come in the form of anti-aging principles, not just cosmetically in appearance, but in terms of longevity and improved overall health. In studies with mice and other animals, caloric restriction or fasting has resulted in an increase of lifespan by almost 30%, regardless of the content of their diets. In addition to longevity, there was a significant decrease in disease, so they lived a healthier, happier life as well. While Yoshinori Osumi recommends intermittent fasting several times a week, I'm currently on day 7 of a water fast, where I've had nothing but water for a week which is considered long-term fasting that can bring about even greater health and spiritual benefits. Of course, this video is not medical advice and is provided in an educational context. You should consult your doctor before attempting any sort of fasting as it's not for everybody. In my case, I'm visiting my doctor to receive some supplement injections because although I feel energetic, content, and slightly euphoric. I may decide to extend my fast by several days and I wanted to make sure my body had the vitamins it needed for longer durations. There will be those that criticize prolonged fasting as extreme or unhealthy. And while I'm not a doctor, as an anthropologist, it seems to me that our bodies are not adapted to eating constantly all day, every day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and lots of sugary snacks in between. 
Every time we eat, no matter what it is, there's an insulin response and the pancreas is not designed to work that hard. Too much insulin leads to insulin resistance and diabetes, but it's also linked to accelerated aging and chronic inflammation, which is the common denominator in just about every chronic disease. Obesity, allergies, arthritis, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, they all involve inflammation and perhaps have something in common in terms of eating all day, all the time, and not allowing autophagy to occur in the body. Historically speaking, the majority of humanity did not eat as much as we do now. When food was plentiful, we gorged, and insulin helped us to store the extra calories as fat, so that when there was no food, which was often, we could draw on our stored fat. When food was scarce, obviously we were forced to fast. In ancient times, people ate some fruit, depending on what was in season, and not always that sweet. In modern times, there's been a dramatic increase in foods packed with sugar, processed carbs, sodas, and artificial sweeteners. People have become addicted because food is available everywhere, especially cheap carbs that impact insulin the most. So, taking a break to fast, at least intermittently, is not a bad strategy. I guess that this fluffy white goose has decided that he's had enough and will give fasting a try. The primary reason for my own fast is that in addition to health benefits, there are dramatic spiritual benefits which mankind used to be aware of but seems to have forgotten. Nearly all religions that I'm aware of have incorporated to some degree fasting for spiritual purposes and in most cases, the context did not only include refraining from eating, but abstaining from other indulgences as well. This was usually done in preparation for an initiation, and fasting helps to prepare the body for heightened states of consciousness. While glucose from food is the body's main source of energy, ketones are produced when the body breaks down fat in the liver and are what your brain uses as energy during a fast. Ketones seem to improve cognitive function by increasing the number of mitochondria in the hippocampus, a part of the brain important for learning and memory. This also leads to a stable, consistent feeling of well-being and euphoria, ideal for creativity, meditation, and spiritual work. When your body is in a state of ketosis, meaning it's deriving its energy from fat rather than carbs or glucose, there's a reduction of inflammation and oxidative stress, as well as a reduction in nervous system excitability. In other words, you feel calmer and more in tune with yourself and your surroundings. One can think more clearly and allegedly has a heightened intuition and can more easily achieve theta states of consciousness. Some religions and philosophies that practice fasting include Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Taoism, Jainism, and Hinduism. Fasting can last for just a few hours or even a few weeks. Interestingly, even within a religion, different denominations or sects may fast differently or at different times. For example, Within Christianity, there are several different denominations that fast at different times. Catholics do not eat meat on Fridays during Lent, while Coptic Christians, the main form of Christianity in Egypt, fast for different durations for a total of 210 days throughout the year. They have eight main fasts, and each lasts for a different duration and restricts the diet in a unique way. The holy month of Ramadan is observed by about 
1.6 billion Muslims around the world. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar, and Muslims observe the month by fasting from dawn to sunset, abstaining from food and drinking, even water. Islam has five main pillars, and fasting is one of them. Bigu is a Taoist fasting technique interpreted as avoiding grains in the Encyclopedia of China. This technique has been used from ancient times to the present day in China and other parts of the world to achieve good health, weight loss, longevity, and even spiritual immortality. The monsoon period in India is a time of fasting, a feature of the Jain faith. Fasting is a regular feature in the Hindu religion, commonly practiced on new moon days and during festivals. Fasting in Judaism consists of a full day fast on Yom Kippur that begins with sunset in the evening and continues through darkness of the next day. Fasting is also important in Buddhism. Buddhists generally fast from noon to dawn of the following day. The diet is characterized by time-restricted eating, also known as intermittent fasting. The diet emphasizes people focusing on when they eat versus what they eat. Fasting is the oldest known form of natural healing. The way it was done in ancient mystery schools was in accordance to the cycles of the moon and other planets and involved abstaining from all appetites, food being only one of them. One effect of fasting is to allow a lot more bioelectromagnetic energy to move through the body. In the Far East, this energy is known as chi or ki. In India, it is called prana, and in parts of Europe, it was known as vril. Studies show that fasting lead to a major increase in HGH levels, that's human growth hormone. One study found that three days into a fast, HGH levels increased by over 300%. After one week of fasting, that increased by a massive 1,250%. This is one reason why many men report a spontaneous increase in erectile function and heightened libido. In secret societies, sex energy is regarded as sacred, and in the study of internal alchemy, it is this same raw life force energy that is harnessed, transmuted, and refined into love-based creativity, spiritual clarity, and intuitive genius, which during the Hellenistic period was called Gnosis. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist. My published work is available on Amazon and through all other major book outlets. If you'd like to support my work, you can do that through patreon.com. There should be a link in the description. Please subscribe for future updates. Leave your thoughts below. Have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.